the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of love and hate with Cicely Tyson as your hostess. Here's a preview. And Kathy, I'm hanging on to my good looks. I'm hanging on to everything that makes me feel alive. Okay. It's not okay. How can I go on living with a woman who doubts me? I won't doubt you anymore. I don't believe you. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Here comes Kathy Appleby. Her freshness stands out in the sophisticated New York City crowd. She's got freckles and corn silk hair. Her soft brown eyes keep gazing up and down those skyscrapers as if she's never seen anything so big. Kathy's just had a promotion from the Muncie, Indiana local news to the national news. It's her first day on the job. She pops the breath mint into her mouth before going into the network building. There she goes into the elevator. Oops, wrong one. Kathy works on the 42nd floor. This one only goes up to 30. Ah, there. Ah, that's the right one. All right. Let's see how she's doing as an up-and-coming producer's assistant. Her first duty, deliver a memo. That doesn't sound very challenging. Oh, but wait. She's taking the note to David Jeffries the international correspondent. Hmm. He looks better on TV than he does in person. Mr. Jeffries. What do you want? Oh, hi. A memo for you. I, um, I like your medallion. It's gold. Solid. An ex-girlfriend gave it to me. It's my sign. Taurus. We're supposed to be very sexual. Oh. Do you believe in that? Not really. Me neither. I usually tell people my sign is the dollar sign. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> so are you. May I take you to dinner? And that's just the beginning of our story. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, My Hero, by Patricia Joyce. Our stars, Les Tremaine and Harriet Nelson, with Miss Joyce as Kathy. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears where America shops for value. There's a great deal more than mileage between Muncie, Indiana, and New York City. There are different attitudes, another pace, and in Kathy Appleby's life, the validity of friendships and how people relate to one another. She's a young woman with things to learn. Kathy, here's to a successful career in New York. Thank you. How's your Samoan wind jam? Good. It's got coconut juice in it. So you're from Muncie, Indiana? Yeah. What's in Muncie? Ball State University? Right. Anything else? Well, not much by New York standards, I guess. Pretty dull. Not really. We just have different ideas of fun. Such as? Oh, like the tires swing by the pond. I used to go off and mess around on that till I was 20. Or family reunions, all the ginger ale you can drink, and everybody cooks their specialties. Uh -huh. I used to get upset because Aunt Sylvie always brought stewed rabbit, and I had a pet rabbit named Eustace. I really adored that rabbit. One day, I let him hop around in the backyard, and then a little while later, Eustace had babies, and we found out he was a girl. <laughs> <laughs> what a hoot. <laughs> Am I talking too much? Oh, no, no, no. You're very charming. I, I was just thinking that a, a delightful young woman like you shouldn't be behind the scenes. You should be a reporter. Oh, I couldn't. I'm much too shy. Oh, but you just said you talked a lot. Well, not, not really. Usually I'm pretty quiet, but once I start talking, I forget to stop. It's awful. But it doesn't happen much in business, though, so I guess that's it. <laughs> I guess I love reporting so much that I assume anyone else would enjoy it, too. Have you had the Bora Bora shrimp yet? Not yet. 
Thanks. I've worked so hard. And don't think it isn't hard to get to the top. But it's worth it for the simple reason that now I get the best assignments. So it's great for you. Um, if I let you in on something, you mustn't breathe a word. Okay. This is very hush-hush of the State Department. I'll keep Mom. Keep Mom. <laughs> Quaint. <laughs> Washington is negotiating to send a few diplomats, doctors, and correspondents to an ancient city way deep in Tibet. They say it's just extraordinary there. Sounds neat. If the negotiations are successful, I'll be representing our network. Wow. <laughs> At least they say I will. They need someone rugged. Like you. Right. Just think, Kathy. The Himalayas, Sherpa guides, mountain goats... It's incredible. It is. Wow. Do you travel? Closest I've ever been to Tibet was when Cousin Jane let me hold a Lhasa Apso. They say the breed is imported from there. I've traveled in the States, but, but never abroad. It must be wonderful. Oh, it's fabulous. If you wish, we can go back to my apartment and I'll show you some of the pieces I've collected. Silver filigree from India, porcelain from France, jade from China. <laughs> Is it an antique? Oh, of course. Staffordshire. Very expensive. Lovely, <gasps> isn't it? Oh, yes. You have such wonderful souvenirs. Want some brandy? No, thanks. Those Samoan wind jammers are a little more than I'm used to. I put a clean toothbrush in the bathroom if you want to make yourself comfortable. What? You know, a toothbrush. <laughs> what is this? Is this a New York custom that I don't know about? You go out on a date and you brush your teeth? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> when a gentleman has a lady stay over, he provides her with a toothbrush. Oh. It's down the hall. Second door on the left. Oh, that, that's sweet about the toothbrush and everything, but I can't stay over. Why not? Because I don't know you well enough. Oh, then why did you come back to my apartment? To see your collection, remember? Oh, great. Dave, it, it's nothing against you... Ever since I was a little girl, a teenager, I mean, I watched you on TV. And I always thought you were really special, sort of my hero. I, I'm honored that you'd want me, but I have to do things in my own time. It'll be a lot better for both of us if I'm comfortable, okay? All right. Then it's okay. Fine. Maybe we can see each other tomorrow. If I'm free. I have to check my schedule. <laughs> fun. I've never seen a carousel so big. Well, let's go over to the green and listen to the street musicians. Huh? You know what Central Park reminds me of? Those French Impressionist paintings with all the people gathered by the banks of the Seine? I find the French Impressionists a bit prosaic. Oh. Do you find New York better than Muncie, Indiana? I guess so. It's much more exciting. <laughs> Just down the hall. I have a collection, too. You want to see it? Mm -hmm. What is this stuff? It's children's art. I collected my favorite pieces from all the kids in the neighborhood. You're not planning to hang these, are you? Oh, well, no. I guess I'll just keep them under the bed or something. But they are nice, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Kathy. What? Let's try a little experiment. Sure. Read this. Okay. <clears throat> Fighting rages today in the Christian section of Beirut. Civil civilian casualties are heavy, although Red Cross personnel work round the clock. They are critically short of men and supplies. Well? <laughs> well, thank heavens it was uh, just an experiment. Well, I told you I wanted to work behind the scenes anyway. Mm -hmm. 
my model of the Taj Mahal, the one with the light inside, it looks filthy. In, in fact, the whole shelf is pretty bad. Would you dust it while you're here? I thought the maid did that. No, mm, not the collection. Okay, I'll get it later. Why not now? Look, Dave, I'm right in the middle of these production reports. I'll do it when I'm done. Always thinking of yourself. Never other people. I said I'd do it later. But you take care of yourself first. Sometimes I wonder why I put up with it. What do you mean? You slurp your breakfast cereal. You talk too loud in art museums. You make a fuss over me in front of the guys on the news team like I were some pet kitten. Oh, oh excuse me. You had a pet rabbit, didn't you? Dave, look, I'm doing my best. I really am. Well, if that's your best, the results are embarrassing. Look, I'm sorry, but, you know, maybe this isn't working out. What's that supposed to mean? I mean, maybe we shouldn't spend so much time together living so close no, and... don't be ridiculous. Well, I'm not really happy. I, I want it to be, but... I think I should move back to that sappy young lady's hotel. You found somebody else you want to date? No. Then why would you want to move? I don't think we get along. We get along fine. You're always yelling at me and ordering me around, and I don't think you respect me or even like me very much. I, I'm sorry. I, I I haven't been feeling well. I'm, I, I'm sick. I, it doesn't help my temper any. I, I, I'm really sorry. Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, I, I, I didn't want to worry you. Oh, you poor guy. You worked so hard. No wonder... Hey, look, why don't you take some time off? They don't really need you right now. You can stay in bed and I'll bring you meals on a little tray. How about it? No, uh, it, it won't help. Why not? Because, uh, uh, there's no cure. It's cancer. They expect it'll be over in a year. Holy moly! I've been in a lot of pain. I, I, I try to be brave, like my reputation demands, but, but sometimes... Like right now, the ache is so intense that I don't feel like being brave. Poor Jane. <laughs> oh, ow. Don't touch me on that side. That, that, that's where it's hurting. I'm sorry. <sighs> Listen, Kathy, don't mention this to anyone. Not anyone, you promise? Oh, sure, but, but, but how come? I don't want anyone in the news department to find out. They'll feel sorry for me and give me soft assignments. If I've only one year left, I want to do it right. Face it strong. Head on. <laughs> That's the kind of man I am. Tough. Of course. <laughs> now, now that you know, I suppose you'll want to move to that hotel. Oh, Dave. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. I can handle this alone. Dave, maybe I get angry at you sometimes, but the bottom line is that I really care about you. <sighs> I don't want to see you hurting, not at all. So if it's okay, I'll move in. I'll take care of you. I'll comfort you in any way I can, okay? Oh, thanks, love. I hope I can be worthy of your sweetness. Don't be silly, David. It's, it's the least I can do. Oh. I need to go for a walk. Get some air. Are you okay? No, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. You be brave. I'll be right back. Don't worry about me. I'll see you soon. I'm sorry I'm late, Dave. I got here as soon as I could. Oh, what I have to tell you is so delicious that I have enjoyed sitting here savoring. I brought all the briefs from your Middle East assignment. The one on Syria, surprisingly enough, is really fascinating. Forget work for a minute, Alan. I have come up with the world's greatest scam. Oh, yeah? What? <laughs> I should patent this and sell it. I have a foolproof way, and that's the real genius. It's foolproof. It's a way of getting a woman to move in with you and wait on you, hand and foot. How? Tell her you're dying of cancer. Hey, it's not true, is it? Oh, of course not. Well, who's going to believe that? Well, you almost did for one. <sighs> Kathy Appleby for another. But she's a sharp girl. A little country, maybe, but still... Exactly. She's a hick, Ellen. She believes that people are basically good and that things will turn out for the best. And she bought this cancer story? All the way. Really? I listened through the door after I left. 
she was crying, stumbling over furniture. She was so upset, I almost decided to give myself a miracle cure. Ah, uh, but then I thought, no, this is too good to throw away. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> really hilarious. Yeah, yeah, it's got that stroke of brilliance. If I do say so myself. Cruelty can be expressed in many ways. But the most vicious is the betrayal of love. And having betrayed to misuse that love. To take continuing advantage of it. Well, I see you finally picked up my shirts. We really should find another laundry. The line at this one is so long. This is the only one that does my collars right. Oh. The lines aren't so bad if you go during the day. Well, who's got the time? Kathy, sit down a minute. Okay. I make plenty of money for both of us. So why don't you leave that crummy assistance job? It's not a crummy job. I enjoy it. I, I didn't mean it that way. Besides, I've never been financially dependent on any man. I don't want you to be dependent. I just want to pay your way so we can spend more time together. But you'll be away at work. Sometimes. But what about the nights you work late? Or the time it takes you to run the errands I'm too sick to do? We can be together then. I guess. I really need you now. It won't be for very long. You know that. The doctor says I've only got a few more months. This bill is ridiculous. It's absurd. He's never charged me half this much. Well, how was I supposed to know you said pick up the alterations and pay for them? Well, if only I didn't have these pains. I wish the muscles in my chest were strong enough for me to pick it up myself. That toady little tailor knows better than to try to push me around. Well, you could have told me what it should cost. You would have known if you weren't such a hit. Please don't insult me. No. I think it's pretty strange that you've been saying you're sick for months now, but you still look great. You're tan. You haven't lost any weight. In fact, I think you've gained a little. What's your point? The point is that every time we fight or you don't get your way, you start talking about your cancer. You make the symptoms worse and the amount of time you have to live shorter. But I don't see any change in you. And well, I'm beginning to be suspicious. Of what? You and your cancer. I think you might be faking it. Dave, we'll say something. Please? You really think I'd fake something like cancer? I don't know. That really hurts. Sorry. I thought you'd be pleased that I look healthy. Well, I am, but I just... But you doubt me. Then I'm sorry I look good. Up to now, I was happy that I looked healthy. I thought my strong, rugged appearance would guarantee me the Tibet assignment. The one thing I want before I die. Besides, of course, the pleasure of your company. Okay. I'm sorry. I was wondering, so I had to ask, and, and now I know you're on the level. And, Kathy, I'm hanging on to my good looks. I'm hanging on to everything that makes me feel alive. Okay. 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 It's not okay. How can I go on living with a woman who doubts me? I won't doubt you anymore. I don't believe you. Come on, please, Dave. I said I was sorry. I don't see why I should let you stay. Because I'd hate myself if I left you sick and suffering. I really would. I care about you. <laughs> Got another promotion, Ronnie. Hmm. Another promotion. Hmm. Uh, it's really not that big. Oh, you, you deserve it. You won all the prizes in college. Yeah. You know why? Because you got class. Huh. That's the most important secret, class. Men like me, we're the virile outdoor types. We have to work at class. We, we don't win awards. We get... Honorable mention? Dave, you're a big star, a famous TV person. Reporter on the spot. I stand in front of the camera on the spot looking rugged and say, there was more fighting in Angola today. But you, Ronnie, you write articles. Rich with human interest. Uh, rich! Hey, see? 
I know what the critics say about you. Oh, if you're not happy with what you're doing, change it. No, oh, it's too late. I'm doomed to be a top foreign correspondent for the rest of my life. It's sad. It's really sad. Hey, you want to know sad? Read my next article. Here, here, you, you just read it. A uh, bartender, two more. Coming up. Oh. Yeah. It's sad, isn't it? Oh, I, I don't believe it. Yet you're right in your gut, doesn't it? Oh. Kid like Randolph Johnson, who could have been the hottest thing in pro basketball. Mm. Keep it change. Thank you, sir. Mowed down in the earliest bloom of his youth by one of mankind's merciless marauders. Uh -huh. That provoking paradox paralysis. Oh. His once proud body can't carry out the commands of his wild and free character. Mm. Oh, those sick athlete stories tear me apart every time. Oh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful article. Yeah, you, you think so? Yeah, it's a wonderful. Oh, I just hope I did the kid justice. Oh, Ronnie, I... Look, I, I gotta tell you something. Yes, yeah, sure, Dave. I, I, I'm, I'm just telling you because you, you're an old, old friend. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be cut down in the bloom of my career, too. Huh? Bango, over! Oh, what happened? I'm dying of cancer. Oh, Dave. Dave, I, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Oh. In the bloom of my career, but I'm going out like a man. Bartender, another round. Mildred, Mildred Weiss. Ron, I haven't seen you in... It was that honorary banquet for Abe Dean, wasn't it? No, no, I ran into you last February at the old club. Of course. Certainly better than Grand Central. <laughs> yeah, where are you off to? Stanford. My, it's my daughter's birthday, and I promised I'd come up. How about you? Oh, just my normal commute. I live in Mount Kisco. Oh, how lovely. Hey, I had a couple of drinks with one of your staff last week. Oh, who is that? David Jeffries. We know each other from school. Oh, yes. He's about to go off on a very interesting assignment. Oh, what's that? The State Department has been negotiating for almost a year to send a diplomatic mission to parts of ancient Tibet. Permission just came through, and I've chosen David to go as our correspondent. Oh? It should be a very exciting assignment for him. Heaven knows he wants it badly enough. He's been coming into my office every week to see if it's going to work out. Mildred, I, I don't think you should take the risk. Why not? Well, haven't you heard Dave's dying of cancer. Oh. Oh, I didn't know. He told me so himself last week. The poor man. Yeah, really tore me up. Well, my conscience certainly won't permit me to send a dying man to some remote region far from medical attention. Yeah. I really don't think you should. To say nothing of jeopardizing the story or causing extra difficulties for one of Washington's more delicate missions. Oh, I'm glad you told me. Poor Dave. Hi, Dave. What is it? Dave? You'll never guess what they did to me. What? They took away the Tibet assignment. Oh, Dave. And that's not all. They've also moved me temporarily to local news. Holy Moses. I hate him. Maybe we should get out of town just for the weekend so you can relax. If I go anywhere, I'll go by myself. I don't want to spend two days doing nothing but listening to you simper. Oh, Dave, don't take your anger out on me. It's not fair and it's childish. But you're driving me crazy. You tiptoe around this place all nervous and apologetic like one of those awful white mice with pink eyes. Gives me the creeps. Always quivering around, afraid I'll step on you. Yes, I am afraid you'll step on me. Nothing I do is right. I, I try to please you. I clean up. I cook things. It's never enough. You're a lousy housekeeper. And your cooking isn't fit for a Muncie, Indiana hog slop. I hate doing those things. But you better learn to do something right. You weren't worth much as a producer's assistant. That's not true. Head of the news department said you were lousy. No, did wife say that? She did. She couldn't have. They were going to ship you home fast. Oh, well... What? 
I've been thinking lately and everything. I know the world has dealt you a pretty nasty turn with being sick and, and now losing the Tibet assignment. Mm. I try to excuse a lot of things because of your illness. The part of me that still cares about you is in agony that you're dying. But the part of me that hates your constant put-downs hates me for staying here and letting you kick me around. Oh, I don't kick you around. You do. You insult my cooking. You don't It like... was a joke. Can't you take a joke? I guess not. I'm going to call that sappy hotel and get a room. I'll come back and pack while you're at work. Working on the local news. <laughs> Terrific. You know you'll be back. Don't be too sure. Kathy, I've only got a few more weeks. The doctor says... Tiffany Tyson again with the concluding act of My Hero. Miss Weiss, I finished the reports you ordered. Thank you, Kathy. I'll just put them here. Um, do you mind if I ask you something? Not at all. Is my work okay? Yes, it's quite good as a matter of fact. Why? What about the time I first came here before I quit to live with David Jeffrey? I always thought you did beautifully. Why? Oh, somebody told me that you didn't like what I did. Oh, that's ridiculous. But I hope you're not one of those people who uses praise as an excuse to become lazy. Not me. I don't know, Dave. I don't understand it either. Well, actually, I can understand why they fired me from the local news. Can't you, Alan? No, I thought you were marvelous. Oh, thanks. But I, I don't do it well. A man like me can't cover the fireman's picnic in Central Park. Well, what are you going to do? I want to do foreign news. Reporter on the spot from all the world's hot points. I'm really great at that. Just as excellent. I'll <laughs> say, you're terrific. Yeah. <laughs> so call Mildred Weiss and tell her you're coming back. Oh, don't think I haven't. In the six months since they fired me, I've gone and see her four times. I've been to see the heads of all the other network news departments at least twice. What did she say? Nothing. They just hedged and acted nervous. And then they hurried me out of their offices like I was carrying a disease. Even Mildred? Especially Mildred. After all I'd done for her. I made that news department, you know. I know. Alan, do me a favor, huh? Call Mildred. Go in and see her. Try to persuade her to hire me. <laughs> Alan, what did you want to see me about? Uh, Ms. Weiss, I'm really sorry to trouble you, but, well, there's a matter that I think bears your consideration. What's that? Uh, David Jeffries. Those of us who worked under him really miss him. We were wondering why he's not back here with us. I have my reasons. I'd like to know what they are. Let's let it pass. It's really important to me. Alan... I don't know how to tell you this, so I'll come right to the point. David Jeffries is dying of cancer. <laughs> I don't think it's amusing. Uh, uh, oh, oh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, you don't understand. Dave's not dying of cancer. It was a joke. People don't joke about things like cancer. But look at him. You've seen him lately, haven't you? He's the picture of health, Miss Wise. He's tan. I mean, he looks like one of those tough guys on a cigarette ad. He doesn't look sick. Alan, I'm sure you're aware that cancer is a rather insidious disease. It has a way of eating away at the interior, even though the exterior appears to be healthy. I couldn't risk the man's health by sending him to some remote foreign country on assignment. But there's no risk. I'm telling you, it was just a joke to hang on to Kathy Appleby. I don't understand. He told Kathy he was dying of cancer. He really had her coming and going. It was one great practical joke. Is that true? Scout's honor. Well, that hardly increases my respect for David Jeffries. Oh, don't you think it's funny? I think it's extremely cruel. You're kidding. Apparently, it never occurred to David or you that Kathy might have feelings. Oh, she can take it. Obviously, she has no choice. She's a strong, intelligent girl. 
She's back with us doing excellent work. I've just given her a promotion. She's also a very sensitive young woman. I have no doubt that your little joke was very painful to her. Kathy didn't care. She was bonkers over Dave. I mean, David Jeffries. You can go now, Alan. Tell Mr. Jeffries that I'm not interested in hiring a reporter who has no personal integrity. Then she leans forward and looks at me. You know those beady little eyes of hers, Dave. And she says, tell Mr. Jeffries that I'm not interested in hiring a reporter who has no personal integrity. <laughs> Pompous old witch. Hey, Kathy's back there? Doing excellent work, I might add. Unquote. <laughs> that girl can't even fry an egg correctly. Makes you mad. Wait a minute. I'm getting an idea. One great scheme deserves another. Now, obviously, this whole mess started because of that one great gimmick. So, I'll use another gimmick to get out of it. What? Kathy's back there on the job. Mildred's worried that I hurt Kathy. Kathy is a pushover, and she's always adored me. So, what I'll do is simply charm Kathy into telling Mildred Weiss to give me my job back. How? I'll take her to that Polynesian restaurant we went to on our first date to whiner and diner. She'll go for it. You just wait. <laughs> Hey, baby, you're looking great. You're starting to dress like a real New Yorker, I see. So, you're back in the newsroom, huh? Network couldn't get along without you. They're not the only ones, Kathy. I'm having trouble getting along without you, too. What Mildred Weiss told me is true, isn't it? Kathy, don't be cold. I asked you a question. What was the question? I asked if what Mildred Weiss told me was the truth. I don't know, love. What did she say? She said that you don't have cancer and you never did. That it was just a trick to humiliate me. Well, honey, it's, it's a half true. Meaning? Well, I, I didn't want to humiliate you. It, it was just a joke. A joke? Well, something we'll look back at at, at times like this and, and laugh. Just one of those crazy stunts that make up the brighter moments in life's pattern. I don't call crying myself to sleep every night a bright moment. Those little sadnesses give life its texture, don't they, Lou? When Mildred first told me that you were putting me on about having cancer, I was really furious. I, I wanted to hurt you with my bare hands. I'd never felt that violent before. And, and then I calmed down a little. And I realized that if you went through that ugly, elaborate lie, you must be sick somewhere in you. Sick in your soul, maybe, even if your body is healthy. It made me really sad. Perhaps you could come back and we could start over. I don't think so. But you just said you understood and felt sad. I learned a few lessons from all that we went through. And one of them was that pity is no basis for a relationship. You folks want to start with a cocktail? Two Samoan windjammers. Make mine orange juice. One Samoan windjammer, one orange juice. What do you want to eat, love? I'm not staying for dinner. Why not? I have plans. Just the drinks, then. Hi. You have plans with another man? That's not your business, especially not now. I'd like to make it my business, if you'd like to come back. Dave, it was awful living with you. You attacked me constantly. Nothing I, I ever did was good enough to please you. You put me down for having all the little personality traits that are just me. I was so demoralized, I started thinking I was a terrible person. Oh, now, love, I wasn't trying to hurt you. Maloney. It doesn't make sense, baby. Why would a top successful reporter like me want to hurt a sweet kid like you? I wondered about that myself. And then I started to understand. You're scared. You're afraid of anybody who's happy and positive. You're afraid that their experience of life won't turn out to be as ugly and mutilated as yours. And you're terrified that there may be such things as love and warmth available. And you'll go through life never learning how to receive them. Oh, that's absurd. I know you loved me. That's just it, babe. I did. I really did. And, um, you didn't have to bully me or manipulate me. Not to get my affection in you. I know. It was just... Here we go. 
Windjammer? And okay. Anything else? No, thanks. You didn't have to try to impress me either. I, I could see right through the showing off to the fear underneath. I, I didn't mind your fear. In fact, I thought it was kind of touching and human. So, if you like me so much, why don't you come back? I don't like you. Not, not anymore. I'm just trying to make you see that I offered you something, something that was precious to me, at least, and you abused it. You came to give me a sermon, and that's why you're here. David... I'm trying to talk from my heart and not from my anger. All right, Pollyanna. Cut the nonsense. I forgot how impossible you are to deal with. Sometimes. Listen, honey. Even if it won't work out for us to live together, will you do me a favor? That depends on what it is. Well, I'm not the kind of man who beats around the bush. I I'm direct. So here it is. I want you to go to Mildred Weiss and ask her to give me my job back. Another lesson I learned was to say no to people like you. That means you won't do it? Exactly. But you owe me this favor. I don't owe you anything. You most certainly do. I need the money. I spent a lot of cash when you were living with me. I never wanted you to support me. Oh, all right. I know. But, but listen, I'm going crazy. I need to be working out there in front of the cameras again. Yeah, yeah. You're enough of a show-off that you probably need to strut around in front of millions of people. Oh, come on, love. Don't give me a hard time. Go see Mildred. No. Please. No. Oh, Honey, think of all we've been through, please. That's exactly why I won't go. I've been through too much with you. I know how inconsiderate you can be, and I wouldn't recommend you to Mildred or anyone else until I see you've changed. But I have changed, you love. You not. You didn't come here out of kindness or consideration. You didn't apologize for what you did. You didn't try to ease my pain. You didn't even ask how I was doing. You came here to manipulate me and use me, just like you did before. Kathy, you, you got me all wrong. Oh, no, I haven't. I'm not so stupid that I'll fall for one of your tricks a second time. Maybe it's not too late for you to wake up and change before the cancer in your spirit really destroys you. Kathy, sit down. Let's talk it over. Goodbye, Dave. Please don't ever call me again. You're not looking at my side of... Oh, well. I gotta find another gimmick. That's all. Maybe, maybe I'll talk Ron Harder into writing a story about me. Reporter has miracle cure. <laughs> uh, waitress. Yes? Check, please. Lady already paid it. How much was it? Four twenty-five. Mm. Here you go. Keep the change. Well, the lady already paid it. You keep it. Nobody pays my bills for me. Whatever you say. I'm that kind of a guy. Tough. I know I'm supposed to be impressed. But the lady even left a bigger tip. Satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. My Hero was written by Patricia Joyce, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your hostess was Cicely Tyson. Our stars were Les Tremaine, Harriet Nelson, and Patricia Joyce. Also heard were Barney Phillips, Myron Kane, and Peggy Weber. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. <laughs>